Hi, welcome to Uncle Tim's farm. I'm Uncle Tim, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about the the girls here, the gilts. So I know I've talked about them and mentioned their names before, but I want to give you a more formal introduction. This here's Little Red. This is Blondie. I know very original, creative names. And that there is Bossy. So the three of them, none of them are, are quite a year old yet. I think Bossy's getting close, probably in March. And then these other two, Blondie and Little Red. I think they were born in April, around April time frame of last year. These two are out of a Hereford boar. And then on the mother's side, they come from the lady who has the sow. She's been raising pigs for 16 years, and she's been using different genetics every couple years, switching boars, and then keeping the offspring to try to raise a high-quality meat pig that will grow out quickly and produce good quality meat. So there's uh, a lot of different genetics mixed in there, probably some old spot. Uh, there's Hereford. Tamworth, Land Race, and uh, I'm not sure what all else, but so that's Blondie and Little Red. Now, Bossy here, no idea for sure, other than uh, by observing her or looking at her, what her breeding is. Looks like there's some Berkshire with that stripe around her shoulder, and then other than that, no idea for sure. Although by looking at how deep of a gut she has, it looks like maybe back up the line a generation or so, there's some potbelly pig mixed in there, unfortunately. Uh, potbelly pigs are not necessarily great meat pigs. Let me clarify that statement. The meat from potbelly pigs might be fine, but what I'm talking about is the meat to fat ratio. You're going to get a lot more fat on a potbelly pig and less meat for the weight of the pig. They do produce a lot of lard, so if you're looking for a, a hog that's going to produce lard, they do well at that, but <clears throat> they don't produce a great meat as far as meat to fat ratio. All three of these gilts are bred to Hereford boars. I AI'd them or artificially inseminated them to Hereford boars, and they will be due to spring or due to farrow, have their piglets. This spring bossy there is due to the end of March and Blondie and Little Red are due the first couple first week to first to second week of April. So then I'll we'll have some out of bossy, those piglets will be 50% Hereford. Out of uh, Little Red and Blondie, they'll be 50% plus because I know that there's more. Well, actually, they're 50%, so then the offspring will be 75% Hereford. Yeah, that's correct. So, because they're 50% Hereford, the offspring of a Hereford boar will then give the, those 75% at least, and I know that there's some Hereford mixed in back up the line, so they'll be 75% plus Herefords. So I will have piglets available mid to late May. And then I'll be keeping some of them to raise and, and feed out and butcher for myself. And then I'll also be selling some of those, the ones that are fed. Out. I'll also be keeping some of the offspring, most likely, to replace these other ones as breeders for the breeding program. Um, won't be most likely keeping any out of bossy. She probably won't stay in the breeding program unless she's just a fantastic mother and throws some really great offspring. But with looking at her confirmation, it's not really what I'm looking for. Blondie really, for me, has the ideal confirmation. She's very long, thick, and not a big, huge gut hanging down on her. Looks like she's going to produce some high-quality... Uh, pigs that will produce some really good meat. So uh, uh, most likely I'll be keeping replacement 
guilt out of her and probably nobody else. Um, but I guess, like I said, that could change when we see the pigs on the ground and what kind of mothers they are. And you heard me uh, mention that these are, are gilts and what that means for those of you who don't know that they are female pigs who've not had any piglets. So once they have their piglets here this spring, then they will be called sows. So these three are currently gilts. And yeah, if you look there, you can see Blondie's just a nice long pig. Little Red's uh, nice and long, but she just doesn't have near the, the size that Blondie has. You know, she's got good conformation, just not as grow growing as quickly or as large as blondie and that's more along the lines of what i'm looking for something that's gonna be nice and long give you good long pork belly for lots of bacon nice long loin for pork chops and then nice big hams not excess fat like uh, blondie or bossy has there she's definitely much more fat and if what you're if you have a good market for lard then that's more the type of pig you would want something along those lines but I'm more into I don't have a good market for lard yet if anybody out there's interested in some lard reach out to me I might be able to figure out a way I could ship some to you if you're interested but anyhow blondie here is kind of looking like more towards the ideal of what I'm looking for for my breeding program anyhow we're Getting down in the day, 50 some days until bossy pharaohs, and then these two are just a little over a week and a half, a week to two weeks behind her. So we're closing in on having some piglets on the ground. Looking forward to it. Well, I think that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, like, share this with your friends, and come back to see more what's going on with the pigs and everything else on the farm. Thanks for watching. Bye.